Hi everyone, it's Andy Nguyen and today I'm going to be doing a quick little build guide as to how to build the KBD Fans KBD67 Mark II. This board in specific is the hot swap board so the assembly is easy but there's a few little difficult moments that may challenge a beginner. So in your shipment if you're doing the free shipping or, or like me you do the DHL Express shipping, you get a box like this, simple box, there's padding inside, you open it up and you'll find a few things. Whenever you get your first keyboard, you want to take your PCB and test it first. There are directions in the package, but basically you connect to USB-C, you open up the webpage keyboardtester.com, and you take your tweezers and you connect, you touch the two edges of the KL hot swap socket. So when you touch the contacts of the KL hot swap socket, it should provide the electrical connection so that you can test the PCB that way. You can also just insert a switch into every single socket from the top. So insert the switches into these little sockets. That is also another way, it's a little bit more consistent because the tweezers are a little fiddly. But what you want to do is check that the entire keyboard registers at least the keys that are within the 65%. Do note that the function key will not light up because it's not part of a standard keyboard. So you, you can test that after you put everything together. Make sure you get your alpha keys, the numbers, and I believe the keyboard tester does not register the difference between left and right shift and left, right control, left, right alt. So you have to touch either side to make sure they register. Both will light up on the screen. So after your PCB has been tested, you can go ahead and start building the keyboard. You'll find this keyboard that is partially assembled. You'll get a few bags of screws. I've already taken apart the bags. You should have a few types of screws and this is where people get a little bit mixed up because there have been a few instances where KBD fans have forgotten screws but you need to be able to communicate what you're missing and the customer service will take care of you. They're doing a lot of orders from Black Friday so they're rushing out and they're producing as many of these boards as they can. It's a very popular board due to how much quality you get for the price. So let's go through the items that you're going to be looking out for. So right here these are the longer screws. These are for the case. That is the length of this screw. So long-ish, long-ish. You compare that with the next longest screw. So as you can see, one is less than half of the other. So the difference is the long screw is going to go in the case. So that is eight screws on the outside. In my package, I got a few extras of those. The, what I will call medium length screw this is for the standoffs and the standoffs are right here so in this little bag so in this little bag there are these brass standoffs there are these brass standoffs and phillips head screws and those screw together with this black piece to give you a demonstration as to how that will look it will look like this the hex screw is on the bottom this is on the side of the PCB and above the PCB will be the brass piece, the standoff, and on top of that, screwing the brass piece into the plate will be the Phillips head screw. So remember that image. And if you notice, I have these insulating washers on the screws and this is to protect the keyboard from ESD. That is electrostatic discharge. These keyboards are made full of aluminum, so there's a possibility that electrostatic discharge or just static discharge from you walking around and generating electricity uh, can pass to the PCB. The current revision, as of December, early December 2019, has ESD protection, at least in the hot swap board. Prior to that date, only the solder PCB had the ESD protection. The hot swap PCB had a few issues that a lot of the community have experienced, including myself. I had to ask for a replacement and I currently have in my possession the latest PCB version 2 that has the ESD protection. So there's insulating washers you can buy from AliExpress for about $2 and it will take about a month and a half to ship or you can buy them from Walmart or Amazon and you can get them within two to three weeks depending on where you buy from. I'll put the product links in the description so you can match them but you'll be looking for the washer that has the M2 screw size. So to recap. There are a few screws in the bag. First, you'll have your long case screws right here. Then you'll have your medium screws. 
these medium screws look like this, much smaller. You'll have a little Phillips head and a little standoff. And also, depending on your package, the plate may or may not be mounted on. Mine was mounted on, so I'll run off the assumption that it was already screwed in, but the screws for the plate, they're easy to remember because they're shorter than this one. So you place them side by side, which I'll show in a minute. You can tell which category they fall under. So in the package with the bags, you should have a Allen wrench like this. So in the bags, you also find an Allen wrench and the Allen wrench will be good for everything except the Phillips head screws, in which case you will need your own screwdriver. So this screwdriver I have is from an iFixit kit that I bought a while back, one building PCs. Uh, any small screwdriver will do. Perhaps you have one in your house. If not, you'll need to grab one, but the Phillips head will need that for sure. So the first things first, you take your keyboard case, flip it over, grab your Allen wrench right here, and you unscrew whatever screws have been attached. So for my demonstration, I have only screwed in two, perhaps there will be four, it all depends. But it will be screwed in or it should be screwed in. Of course, this will differ if you order the assembly service, in which case everything will be screwed in. I do not recommend the assembly service if you're doing the hot swap board because it's literally just screws. Um, there have been instances where if you order the assembly service, there won't be anything missing because there's a human that has to come by and put it together. That costs an extra fee, so you can be the judge as to whether or not you want to do that to kind of confirm that you have all the screws. So in working, I try to set up a little area where I put all my screws. Some people use bowls. I'm gonna use this foam piece. So this back piece we do not need right now. It's the last step, so I'm put it aside. So right here, I have all the standoffs already screwed in, but I wanted to take apart the screw that goes into the plate. So you can see the difference. This is gonna be extremely difficult to tell this one over here is a little bit longer. This one over here is a little bit shorter. It's really hard to tell. Like, I didn't even realize it until I stared at it, but the smaller screw goes into the plate. It goes right here. So you may get confused, but the, the shortest length screw needs to screw into a brass piece. There are times where I screwed into the colored piece of the case. That is not correct. That's where the long screw will go in. It will go through from the bottom piece of the keyboard. So let's screw that in. I'll take apart the standoff so you can see how it's assembled but I will show you how I recommend putting them together. I do recommend putting the Phillips head and the screw in first so that you don't have to juggle a bunch of things. If you were to do everything at once, you would have to have your PCB with the stabilizer installed and you'll be holding that in place with one hand and then the other hand holding the top part of the keyboard and then you're trying to screw in the hex screw on this side and then the Phillips head on this side and it gets really, really difficult. So I like to do the plate first. So you see right here, we have the brass plate. I'm, I'm looking at the back of the top piece. So the top of the keyboard is on this side. Right here, we have the standoff. So what I like to do is I put the standoff where it should go, and then I look at the top part. I kind of just hold the standoff in place there, drop in the screw. The Phillips head screw is flat, so it's supposed to sit flush with the plate. I hold the standoff with my finger for friction, just enough to screw it in. And that is how I do my first part. So what you'll have is a Phillips head on top and then the standoff screwed in on the back. Wait, right there in the back. So it's already held in place. You'll repeat that with all the rest of the Phillips heads and the standoffs, making sure that they're sturdy and held in place. The holes are really obvious. They're between switches. So the next part we're going to work on is the PCB. So in the original packaging, these stabilizers will be assembled and they will have legs on there that 
really add to the noise. These are cherry stabilizers, so they still have the legs clipped on. So in the package, it won't be this Ziploc bag. I've already cleared away some of the original packaging, but it will be, there will be assembled stabilizers, and this is a stabilizer right here. So a stabilizer is a metal rod that moves up and down with the switch. So when the switch goes up, the rod goes up. And these stabilizers are snap-in stabilizers, so they literally just get pushed into the PCB. Whenever you get your keyboard, I highly recommend you tune your stabs. Tuning stabs means taking them apart, clipping off the legs of the stem of the stab, lubricating the wire, lubricating the plastic pieces, so that it's a smooth motion up and down, and then reassembling them prior to putting it into the PCB. This has already been done because this keyboard has been used. So we've been looking at the back of the PCB. You wanna to flip to the front now. If you look closely here, I have done what's already called a Band-Aid mod. And right there, I have some electrical tape. Right there, I have some electrical tape, and there's some lubricant on top of it. The original Band-Aid mod involved cutting a Band-Aid and putting it there where the Stabilizer will hit the top of the PCB. I use electrical tape just because it can hold better and it can hold lube better. You would put electrical tape every single place where a stabilizer would go. And for a new for a newbie, it may be difficult to and for a newbie, it may be difficult to know where the stabilizers go. What you're gonna be looking for, what you're looking for is these little cutouts and these little holes right here. So you're looking where they pair up. And you can tell, if you look at the back of the PCB, there's words like enter and shift and space. And those are the keys that need stabilizers. That would be L shift, space, enter, and backspace. So you can see here that there are four stabilizers, one, two, three, four. These are two U stabilizers, and this is a 6.25 U stabilizer. And on a standard regular keyboard with full size right shift, you'll have four two U stabilizers and one 6.25 U stabilizer, typically. So after you've tuned your stabilizers, you wanna snap them in to their proper locations. One specific thing to note about the KBD67 Mark II hot swap PCB is that the right enter stabilizer is actually flipped. The position of this enter stabilizer is backwards in regards to typical convention. So that stabilizer will be upside down. So the thing to know is right here, there's a little clip this slides in actually, and that goes into the bigger hole on the PCB. The little part that compresses, that goes into the smaller hole. So if we're looking right here, that is the bigger hole and that is, this, and that is a smaller hole. So what you wanna do is take the stabilizer, take the bigger piece, go into the bigger hole, and then the part that compresses will go will be pushed into the PCB. Don't be afraid to apply a little force. But not too much force because I have broken a stabilizer by trying to force it out. Repeat that for all the stabilizers. Like I mentioned, this enter stabilizer is backwards. As you can see, the bar flips. But once we get to the other side over here, it is normal orientation. As you can see here, the enter stab is flipped and we, look for the, and we look on the rest of the keyboard for the bigger hole, stick that big piece in and snap the other piece in. To double check that your stabilizer is working, you should be able to pull the stem up If you can't pull the stem up, you will have, that means you put the stem in backwards, so you have to take it apart. Don't make a mistake like me and ignore this checking step because you're gonna end up uh, realizing that you need to take out all your switches so you can flip your stabilizer. So last piece, got the space bar in here. Double check all the stems. We have a PCB that has been assembled with stabilizers. Give you a quick little look as to how it looks on the PCB. And there you go. Now that you have put the stabilizers on the PCB, if you have purchased MK Ultra Foam, this would be a good time to grab it. This is what the foam looks like. There's two pieces. This is for the case. This is for the PCB. 
the blue one will sit right on top. That's not right. Sit right on top. And there's precision cut, laser cut openings to fit everything. So the stabilizers pop right through. You can see them all right here. And from here, you can see that there's also cutouts for the standoffs. So we'll grab the top part of the case. We will flip this over because the right blocker, right there, we'll flip this over because the right blocker will be on the front. We want to put the PCB on behind it because that's how we're going to screw it in. The PCB is not shown on the top of the keyboard, it's actually under the plate. It's right here. Keep everything in place. Line it up. You can see that there's cutouts for everything. I would lift it up to try to make sure everything slots through like that. So if you see, the foam shouldn't show. So the fact that it's blue shouldn't deter you from buying it. The foam, when done correctly, and MK Ultra does it right, will not show through from the top. So at this point, we are going to grab our little screws. These are the black screws, the little tiny ones. I put some insulating washers on there just in case. Uh, typically you put them on the screw and stabilizers. I'm going to be putting them on the standoffs as well because there has been there have been some reports of this interfering with the PCB and causing some kind of shorting. So the old version, of course, but I've already bought uh, these washers and they came in a pack of 1200. So why not just put it in? So the washer goes onto the screw itself and I would do that prior to screwing it in rather than trying to line it up on the PCB and trying to make sure you screw in between or inside the circle. There are the holes where you can see the standoff. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And you should have eight of these little screws over here. I'll put them in. I'm gonna try putting them in all at once just to make sure I have enough. And if at any point you find that your short screws first, make sure you didn't get them in the first place but feel free to contact KBD fans through their Discord or their email or their Facebook chat and they can get you sorted. All right, so we just dropped the rest of the screws in. I got the one last piece. At this point, the foam is gonna push back a little bit, but the screw, make sure it just catches the standoff and you'll kind of squish it and compress it a bit. That way the foam can do its job in terms of kind of eating up the reverberation of the plate. I missed one of the screws here. So with all keyboard building, really make sure that just go, just screw until you feel tension Make sure you don't over tighten and strip your screws because you won't be able to extract them. What stripping screws means is that you screw to the point where the little hexagon shape has worn into a circle and it won't catch anymore. So you have to get a screw extractor and that is no fun. Just take it slow. Don't force anything. It should kind of, uh, if you think you're screwing it too hard, you probably are. I definitely missed a screw there. Almost fell and disappeared into the extents of my living room. All this talk about over tightening, I didn't tighten it enough. So right now we have the top piece of the keyboard all completed. You should be able to see the Phillips head screws. And on the back, we have the PCB with the hex screws holding, or with the hex screws attached to the standoffs, compressing the foam and creating one tight unit. So as you can see here, we still have extra screws, extra standoffs, and these are for the back of the case. These are expected. Before we put the top piece of the keyboard onto the bottom piece, here's the case from, from MK Ultra. It has the cutouts for the kale hot top sockets. And some people may prefer to just DIY this and get some shelf liner, which I have done before, but it would be very difficult to cut out the holes for the hot swap sockets. Some people use a netted kind of foam. That one's easier to cut out holes. 
you can really just use shelf liner and it'll do most of the job even if the kale hot swap socket is kind of pushing into it but i wanted to get the best performance out of my kbd67 performance a term i use loosely but the best sound and experience so i bought kbd67 foam from mk ultra with the foam you just need, you want to look for that piece that has an opening and that opening right there that little opening is for the usb-c so if you can find that opening you're good there's precise cutouts for the four corners and that's pretty much it you can cut it yourself it'll do most of the same job if you're on a budget but i highly recommend this if you have the budget to really get the most out of your kbd67 mark ii to this point we just put the top piece on and it should sit flush the seams there's no kind of locking or guide when putting the top piece and the bottom piece together so i like to use my fingers and run it along the edges to make sure i'm lined up and adjust as necessary before fully screwing it down so now we have the four screws So now we have the eight screws, not four, I cannot count. Drop it in. I like to do the four corners first to kind of secure it in place, kind of line it in plan horizontally before I screw it down vertically. I'm gonna start with this. I would just do a few rotations till I start feeling tension. And then adjust if you look closely, you can kind of feel it moving back and forth, which is unfortunate, but this is a beginner custom mechanical keyboard. I don't need to grab that. So let's do the opposite corner. Again, I'm using my hand to feel for the ridges. I just don't want a hard edge. The weight of the keyboard will kind of hold it in place. So just line it up and then continue screwing. Okay. I'm pretty happy with where it is right now. So the black aluminum will likely pick up finger oils and fingerprints and I'm building right now. So I'll focus on cleaning that later. But this right here is the, the assembled board, no switches. You can see the brass looks really nice up against the black case and the right blocker makes it feel look pretty premium. And my favorite part is the weight on the back. That is class right there. Really nice looking. Mm -hmm.